Hello, welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In today's episode, we are going to talk about torsion. Torsion. What do we mean by saying torsion? Now, torsion refers to the twist of structural members when it is loaded by couples. Pay attention to these couples that produce a rotation about its longitudinal axis. I will explain that. So, what we are going to learn in this episode is all about twisting, or about torsion. If we have structural members or when we have bars, you can look at this. Let me call this as the second one and I can call this as well, the first one. Now, what do we see? We can see that we have attached a force to this part for P2 and the same force is in the opposite direction this way as what P2. And we are trying to rotate this member or this bar is being rotated about an axis, let's call say X. Now, as we try to rotate this bar, let's say in this direction, we are going to twist the member, member AB. We are going to twist it about its axis but this is the longitudinal axis, about what? The length. That's why we are saying the longitudinal axis. So torsion is just a twisting of a member by couples or by what? Force. When we talk about couples, we are talking about two parallel opposite what? Force of equal magnitude, right? So you can see from this part that the force P2 moving this way is equal to the same force P2, trying to rotate the member about the X axis. So in that case, if we are trying to twist the member about a certain axis, then torsion is taking place, any twisting. So you can see from the second diagram that a rotation of this arm about this direction will cause a twist. You can also rotate it about this direction. So if we are rotating it about the A direction, then we are going to cause a twist this way. So the original axis of the bar is going to be distorted. It is no longer going to be this way. It is going to assume another position because there has been what? A twist in the member. Do you understand that? It is very simple. So torsion is a twist of an object caused by a moment. We learned about moments as the force multiplying the perpendicular what? distance. Do we get that? So anytime that there is a torsion, there is also what? A deformation. A deformation. Remember I said once this member is twisted about a direction, this x as is or the longitudinal axis is no longer going to be the same. It is either going to position itself at a different point above it, or it is going to position itself below it, depending on the direction of the twist. Very simple. Now we have to also understand certain parts. When we talk about couple, you cannot twist a member with just a single force. There should be a couple. So as I'm trying to use this force to twist it this way, it is possible because there's an opposite force at this direction or an opposite moment at this direction going to help the member to twist. Do you understand that? All right, so this is all about torsion, the ability to twist a member about its longitudinal axis, the length of the member. So we can consider certain things that we twist. We can also look at the propeller shaft, the steering rod, and also drive shaft in what? Machines, they are all twisted. Do you get that? So this is just an understanding of what torsion is about, anything, twisted. Now let's look at a cross-section.
for deeper understanding, let's look at this diagram. Now we can see that there is a torsion here or a twist T in this direction. So we are twisting the member in this direction. And we can see that, let's assume that initially this is the axis of the bar. So it is at this direction. So you can see that once there is a torsion or once there is a twist by a top T, you can see that the axis is positioning itself at this point. So the original axis is now displacing by an angle. So you can see that from the reference point, there has been a twist, there has been a displacement of the original axis. So you can see that an angle, say, that is what produced. So we are interested in finding out what happens, how this is occurring. So the, your ability to understand that once there is a twist, there is going to be a deformation produced. There is going to be displacement of the axis from its original position to a different position. Then we bring in the idea of finding what? Strain and what? Stress. Are you okay? So this diagram is going to help us to un analyze the case and also derive formulas for the strain produced caused by what? The twist and the strain or the corresponding stress. So let's look at the equations. Now, to begin with, I will draw this diagram. So we want to analyze the twist. So first of all, let me see, I have a rectangular bar. This way. So I will name it A, B, C, and D. So I have this. And I'm twisting the member. This diagram is produced from this bar. So I have a bar fixed this way. So this is a bar which is fixed at a point. And I'm trying to twist this bar by called T. And I'm trying to see what will happen. So if I'm twisting this, then the axis, the original axis about its length, say x, is going to what? twist. So the cross section, if we look from this side, the surface is going to be what I've drawn over here. So what we are going to see now is the deformation that is going to be produced. Let's look at what it is, what is going to happen. You can see that once you twist, there is going to be a displacement. So this axis is going to displace to this point. And this part is also going to displace to this point. So you can see that a new part, so we can name this as A. This part will be B prime. This part will be what? D prime. We can see a distortion inside the member. So this is the bar. And this is its cross section. A deformation has been what produced so we are interested in that deformation and the deformation produced is what we are going to call the shear strain the shear strain so shear strain is denoted by this so the shear strain we are going to do the analysis and derive a formula for the shear strain produced by the torsion or the twist. So I will draw a member, the same member, so big, such that we can make some correct analysis. Here in this analysis, we are only going to consider circular cross section bars. Are we okay? So when we look at this, this is what rectangular cross section. And this is going to be what? Circular. In our analysis, in our problems, we are only going to solve with circular bars. So let's look at this originally. So this is going, this is fixed at this point, 
and I'm applying a torque to twist this member in this direction. So T, right? So we know that torsion occurs along its longitudinal axis. So let me call this as the longitudinal axis. Say X, X as the axis. Please pay attention. We are deriving the stress and the strain formula. So if this is the original axis and I'm twisting this member, then it is going to displace itself. Depending on the direction, it is going to displace itself. So now the new axis is going to lie at this point. So this is the new axis. So let's assume this is the center of the bar. So we can see that there has been what? A displacement here. So I will call that displacement. Let me join this so that we can differentiate them. This is the new axis because of the twist. Whatever that started has been twisted to a different direction. So I can call this as what an angle. That's the strain, gamma. There has been what? A strain produced. We can see there has been what? A deformation caused. So in order to, let me call this part as my part A. I will also call the original here as well B. Let me call the new part as B prime. And this small angle will be theta. Do you see that? All right. So now if I'm considering the bar, let's make some clear analysis. Please pay attention. So that in any case, if you forget the formula, you can just derive it by yourself. This is what I'm getting. If I'm just considering the angle, this is the new position of the axis. This is the original. And there's a form of what? A circular arc like this over here. Do you see that? Yes. From the figure, this is the part A. This is the B. This is the B prime. We have something like this here, which is also connecting this way and this to that. And we are calling this as the angle theta. So this is the view of the axis from the bar. Do we see that? Yes. Now, what can we see? This is the deformation produced. That's the strain. So can we say that if we are going to apply tan to this, assuming it is behaving as what? A triangle. So if I'm saying tan of the gamma, that is going to be tan, which is opposite. This is the opposite part over the adjacent, the adjacent part. So that is going, this is B prime. That is going to be B, B prime on AB, right? And what can we see? AB from A to B, it is actually the length of the bar the total, the original length, when there was no deformation. So you can see that this part is the L, right? Then we can see that tan of the gamma, the deformation produced, is still going to be B, B prime. Now we know AB is the original length L. So we have it that way. When you look at B, B prime, it is what? Not a length, it is an arc, right? It is an arc. So we can find the circumference, the length of an arc. So the length of an arc, which is B, B prime, which is also length of an arc. And we know that the length of this arc can be found by the radius of, because looking at the bar, we said we are considering a circular part. So meaning, if this is an arc, then we can have a radius r, which is what? Radius. And to find the arc, we are going to say it is radius multiplying by what? The angle of twist. That's geometry. So b, b prime, which is length of an arc, is going to be the radius of the circular surface multiplying by the angle theta that it rotated. Now we have this. So we can say tan is equal to, we have our radius theta on the length. Now when you look at how tan behaves 
for small angles, for small angles, you can verify for small angles, tan of an angle is equal to the same angle. Do you, do you understand? So we can say that tan r or tan gamma is the same as gamma. Therefore, our gamma, which is the deformation produced in the bar, can be calculated by the radius of what? The cross-section surface, we can see a radius. Since it is a circular bar, we can know the radius. The angle of twist on the total length of the bar. So this is an equation that is going to help us to find the shear strain produced by the torsion. So this is shear strain. by torsion because we twisted the bar at an angle at a degree or in a radian we are going to have a shear strain so gamma is the shear strain which is the radius multiplying the angle of twist or on the total length of the original Bar. Now we know that since we have shear strain, there should be what? A proportional shear stress from Hooke's law. So from Hooke's law, from Hooke's law, we know that stress or this is shear stress should be proportional to what? the shear strain. Is that right? Yes. And if we remove the proportional sign, we are going to get the shear stress should be a constant. We would denote that by G and the shear strain. So we already know the formula for the shear strain, meaning the shear stress is also going to be the G, the radius, please Differentiate between my R and my gamma. So this is gamma, this is R. So this is radius, the angle of twist, everything on the length. So this is going to give us the corresponding shear stress. Are we okay? The corresponding shear stress. If there is a linear or there is a linearly elastic material. What we are saying is that the Hooke's law only work when there is what? Linear elastic between the stress and the strain. From the proportional limits, stress is not what? Proportional to strain when you exit from the proportional what zone you can check that that one in an episode or the second episode of this tutorial. So now we know this is the shear stress, the corresponding shear stress inside a bar which is twisted, and our G is the shear. modulus g is what we call shear modulus so we have all these equations so perfect so once you understand all this this is the building or the foundation to which we are going to derive other torsional equations this is the foundation you know the shear strain you know the shear stress from the torsion now let's derive a formula that will inculcate the torsion also as part of the equation and derive a general formula which will help you whenever you forget anything you consult the general formula to be able to derive all these formulas so thank you for watching this episode check out for the next episode where we are going to derive all the formulas that the general formula please subscribe to the channel see you in the next episode.